Welcome back to uh, Character Modeling with me, Steve Moore. We're looking at a sculpt of a character named Shion. Um This is what we're going to be starting with. And we're going to be taking this model and turning it into um, this concept as we've reviewed before. Um, today, yeah, today we're actually kind of going to start looking at posing her out. So um, stick around. Um, this should be fun. All right, as you remember, maybe recall last week, we had some unfinished business. Uh, I was showing you guys uh, the wonders of Z Remesh and how ZBrush, I think, is close to um, giving us final animatable meshes with a few clicks. It's not there yet, but um, I think with, yeah, with Z Remesher in combination with Z Remesh Guide brushes, you can get pretty close. So um, this is what we ended up with. Um, with Z Remesh and it's not perfect but you can see that um, we were able to get the loops to generally follow the orbits of the eyes and generally the orbits of the mouth um, for this to be really to make this a good animatable mesh we'd want the loops following the nasal labia fold starting up in the nostril here all the way down we'd want very precise loops around the lips and the eyelids as well um, and those would be the main things and then you know it depends on on how you're rolling in games uh, this forehead detail would be perfect we would just add in uh, bump in normal maps for such things as wrinkles you know like if he's frowning we want to see some wrinkles up here we'd use a texture map um, other approaches like in film they they sometimes actually will carve in loops for the wrinkles um, it, which is uh, I think that's crazy I mean not crazy as, as in you're crazy we're doing it's just uh, that's a lot of work anywho um, but back to this guy um, so we had lost a lot of detail in the process that's that's the issue we're faced with right so oh okay so this is our old mesh looks fine um, but it's you know very dense and our new mesh which does not have the detail but has better topology which is going to be easier um, to pose and manipulate you know like if we wanted to give them an expression etc um, so to to fix that all we have to do is subdivide him a few times so I know he's nice and smooth um, and we'll go back down to our source mesh this guy will turn on transparency um, turn now we are, we are on our, our Z remesh head our new mesh is active and we go down to project um, I'm working in real world units so these these default values will work quite nicely projectile and see what we got we've got both meshes visible right now so we'll just turn the other one off and there you go so now you can see you know we've got some of the detail back um or we to you know it's still a little pixelated you know so um let's see a little pixelated but uh another subdivision should fix that just boom you know, don't you don't need to go crazy out of the gate with the subdivisions. Subdivide as much as you need to. Uh, reproject, and as you get denser, it will take longer, obviously, to reproject. Um, but this still should not be too bad. And there you go. So we'll turn off the source mesh, and now we're getting to the point where the two become hard to distinguish between. There's the original and the new one. Um, uh, with, it should be said, the topology we want. So we can now jump up and down in subdivision levels. Um, I can do some crazy stuff to this guy, like I could make his his head a bit bigger here, or his nose a bit longer, like Pinocchio nose. Doo -doo. Um, and as I subdivide it, you know all the all the high-res detail propagates to the higher subdivided model and there you go with that we're going to move back to Xion. so the reason for the sojourn down mystery guest lane was to really just to show you guys how we got to 
this point as far as the, the head and the body goes. Um, this model started the same way as, as my previous example, you know, cubes and boxes masked out, and then I ultimately remeshed um, this model to, you know, so that I could deform her and animate her. So the base mesh, uh, if I turn on wireframe for a second here, so this is the topology. Um, it's a little better than the previous mesh I showed you, um, but not perfect actually. So if we drop down a few subdivision levels to the to the base here, so you can see that this is uh, the loops are definitely um, you know wrapping around the eyelids and not forming nice distinct circles. Uh, the nasal, you know, the loops start up here by the nostril and wrap all the way around the mouth and they are, the, the mouth forms concentric circles uh, radiating out. Um, there are some, in the process of sculpting this, this lady, um, is because full story, you know, base mesh was masked out, um, that was turned into a, a generic female and then from that I turned it into this. In the process of doing that I did my loops on my mouth, did it get a little wonky? Um, and depending on whether I end up animating her face or not, I would fix that stuff. Um, also, this is not ideal up here, this, this topology, this big fat patch right in the middle of her forehead. That could be better. I could, definitely could do a few more loops around there. It could be a little denser and more even. Um, but with that said, what we have here is a mesh that I can um, very easily deform. Um, you'll notice, for example, uh, details like the, the kneecaps. This was done by hand. I have, I have retopologized this so that when I bend her knees, there's more topology there than over there. And um, that's because at, the, at, the, at this base level, this mesh uh, could in fact be taken into Maya, rigged and animated. So, um, so the nice thing about that is if I want to make a change or perhaps make a, a blend shape or a wrinkle map, I can go back to, in a pose, I can go back into ZBrush and I can sculpt those details on directly onto this mesh and bake that out. Um, anywho, so, and that's what we want to do. We basically, um, we want to take this model and uh, go into Maya and put her in the pose uh, of our concept here. Um, as you'll recall, and you'll notice too with the concept of the model, you know, we're going to rebuild all this, this whole to top, this, this stuff, the dress, you know, the belt, the dress, the shoes are all going to get, are going to be remodeled and we're going to model um, her cybernetic legs, which she has here. Uh, cool. So we're going to take this model into Maya now. Uh, so uh, with her lowest subdivision level active, I will export out an OBJ. Uh, when you do this stuff, make sure to turn groups off because if you have any poly groups, it's going to it's going to export them as separate meshes. And then I will just export her. Like that. Boom. So here we are in Maya and uh, we have the same base mesh we were just looking at in ZBrush. Um, and I have gone to the trouble of adding a skeleton. Um, this is, I just started with an existing skeleton, um, the one that I originally built for the generic female. And I reproportion it to match my new character. Um, and we've got some IK handles so that we can, we can pose out her, if I grab one of the handles, like we can just grab her leg here, you know, and uh, pose it using IK for the uh, for the uh, arms. We're going to use forward kinematics, i.e., just straight up joint rotations, you know, so we can pose her arm out like that. Um, it's found that to be a little bit easier, and there you go. So before beginning, I did grab my root joint on my skeleton and I set a key at at zero 
you know, uh, making sure that everything, everything below all keyable attributes and everything below is selected. Um, and I set a key there at zero. And then I was also sure to grab my uh, IK handles here and and key those too otherwise you know the feet will go off in wacky directions so that's that the reason for that is so that um, after posing the model um, we can we can return we can always return to the bind pose at zero like that so we you know posed him posed her um, and oh by the way yeah you're gonna see uh, that my my weighting here is far from perfect because yeah we have some shearing going on around the shoulder here um, fortunately it's not so bad that I can't just smooth that out and ZBrush so I'm going to roll with that um, I made a, a quick proxy for her cell phone you know so that's that travels with her hands and it's you know it's in the right position we can we can add the final model and later when we make it um, Please excuse the censorship boxes, but I need to be careful. Um, there you go. So that's that's pretty much it. So we could, you know, yes, we could use transpose and ZBrush to um, to pose her. However, the reason I'm using the joints is because it is a lot more precise. I I can guarantee that my you know any any parts that I want to add to her, I can get them into the same position because I can link. As I did with the uh, cell phone here, I can link that to the skeleton, you know, and and that will travel, that will travel with it, um, and anything else. Which, for example, I know I'm going to make a new belt. I'm going to make new shoes here, and so I want to be sure that I can position those at frame zero in the bind pose, and they will all follow along for the ride when the character is animated. Cool. Um, also, it's something I didn't mention was this here is this here is basically it's kind of it's proxy here because for this project we're going to make hair cards, um, but in the back of my but I made I made this I roughed this in because the style is so quirky that I felt like I needed to figure it out in 3D space before I even attempted the um, actually making hair cards for that. Also, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about 3D printing this character, in which case we'll have to make modeled hair. So that's everything that's going on in the back of my mind here. And with that, now we've got our pose. All we have to do is export these pieces back into ZBrush as an OB, as OBJs and Bob Charanti. Okay, guys, we'll wrap things up this week. Um, just bringing in that pose that we were looking at in Maya. So I'll grab the body here. Uh, and I'm gonna the first thing I'm gonna do I'm at this higher subdivision level uh, as you can see here I am going to throw it on a layer um, for so we can always come back to this pose so we have this is our bind pose and we're gonna throw this layer on to actually bring in um, the selfie pose and the first thing we we'll need to do is drop down to the same subdivision level as the mesh we're importing um, so all over here and I'm going to go document, new document and just bring in her, let's see, pose here, boom, and there we go, um, did cheat a little bit, obviously it had the, uh, had the censorship boxes all ready to go, everything in place, but um, you get the idea. Some some work ahead of us. The fun thing is, uh, and the challenge for me is going to be, um, I don't have reference other than than what I found for the concept. So a lot of this is going to be uh, constructing anatomy, like getting figuring out what this uh, anatomy should actually look like. Um, from my head and from what I can find on the internet. Um, cool news, I'm going to be going to New Zealand for a month here. Um, so I'll be down there trying to get better at surfing. Um, does mean I'll be taking a break from this. So I will catch you guys at the beginning of January. All right, ciao.